Hi, I'm Joe Garagiola. And I'm Gary Carter. And we're your hosts for the Ultimate World Series, the greatest games in World Series history played out in one classic series. Up next, Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series. It's the fifth game of the 1972 World Series between the Cincinnati Reds and the Oakland A's. And stay tuned for Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, and the Big Red Machine. The Cincinnati Reds. The Oakland Days. Two of baseball's best in the 70s. Down three games to one in the 72 World Series, the Reds need to win game five to stay alive. Will they survive, or will the A's fly high and win the 72 Fall Classic? Hi, I'm Joe Garagiola. 1972 was a year that rocked American politics. Five people were arrested in the Watergate break-in, and Alabama Governor George Wallace was shot. Even television got into politics with the debut of the series MASH. In baseball, there was the politically incorrect bunch, the long-haired and rebellious Oakland A's. Now, the A's survived a season of discontent. I'm going to tell you about the discontent. Reggie Jackson once told me when he walked into the clubhouse, he didn't know if he was going to shake hands with somebody or get punched out. That's the way that clubhouse was. But they did manage to beat the Tigers in the playoffs, and they reached the World Series. And there they met the clean-cut Cincinnati Reds, who had come back in a dramatic playoff series to beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, the game you're about to see is Game 5 from the 72 World Series, and here to relive it is former All-Star catcher Gary Carter. Now, the A's took three of the first four games without the services of Reggie Jackson, who had pulled a hamstring in the playoffs, and he's out for the series. How have the A's done it? Gary, you got an answer? Gene Tennis. Gene Tennis. Here was a backup catcher all year, hit five home runs, had 32 RBIs, and in Game 1, his first two at-bats home runs. First guy in the history to, in his first uh, at bats in the World Series, to hit home runs. He also hit a home run in game four. So by the time we get to game five, he's already hit three. I'm telling you, he was kind of a forgotten soul because uh, in the 1972 World Series, here's Reggie Jackson, the big talk about him, the Oakland A's, the mustachioed, long-haired, rebellious team, and here's a guy like Gene Tennis who didn't have a lot of hair, and he was able to come through and have a big, big series. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Well, sorry. Huh? I, I'm, I'm losing it, too. <laughs> Let's talk about Morgan and Rose. They weren't exactly on the road to the Hall of Fame in that series. No, they were a combined one for 28 going into game five. And they had really been struggling. They were the keystones to that ball club. And, you know, they had had uh, some World Series experience and things like that. And, uh, I mean, to tell you, they were gung-ho to have a big uh, World Series. One for 28 combined. One for 28. That'll make you a broadcaster in a hurry, those kind of stats. <laughs> well, the Reds have their work cut out for them as they face Catfish Hunter for the second time. So let's go to the Oakland Coliseum for Game 5 of the 1972 World Series. Kurt Gowdy, Monty Moore, Tony Kubek with you. If you'd have bet me and Monty and Tony before the series that Rose and Morgan would have one hit combined in 28 times at bat, I would have laughed at you. Pete Rose is one out of 15. He leads it off here in game five. And he hits a high drive in the deep right. That was way back, and it is gone. He hits the first pitch for a home run. And the Reds lead very quickly, one to nothing. Didn't take long, huh? Reds came out of the dugout about the same way yesterday, swinging at the first pitch. The first three hitters did it. The old Morgan hasn't had a hit at 13 times up. A strike. He was telling me before the game, is I, I can't tell you what's the matter. I feel like I'm comfortable up there. And the same way for Pete. He uh, had a check swing and taps it back to Hunter. One down. That home run's not going to bother Hunter. He has a lot of poise, Monty. Yes, he's had some trouble in early innings uh, this year, Kurt, but he is an awfully tough competitor. I've seen him down two or three runs in the early innings, and he just keeps plugging along, realizing he's going to get that rhythm and tempo back. 
Bobby Tolan spiked a double in the eighth inning last night to right field that scored two runs to put the Reds in front. Then they lost that lead in the last of the ninth. Tolan's had three hits in 16 times in the series. One out, nobody on, and the pitch is just outside for a ball. And Pete Rose has become the 11th hitter to lead off a World Series game with a home run. One ball, one strike. Tommy Agee, the last to do it in game three of the 69 series between the Mets and the Orioles. 1-1 one, one pitch. Popped up. Calling for it, Campanaris, the shortstop. Two down. Nobody on, Johnny Bench. He and Perez have done their job in the middle of the order. They haven't hit with power, but they've been on base. Bench has had five hits in 14 times. The problem is there's been nobody on base ahead of them through the first four games. The Reds have not scored over two runs in any single game of this series. That's how effective the A's pitching has been. A strike. Ball one and the Reds have been held without a home run until Rose has let off this game with his homer over the right field wall. Two out, nobody on. The Reds leading one nothing. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. Many people are still not impressed with the A's of the team. Of course, they're, they're not quite the same team as they are when they have Reggie Jackson in the lineup. But Harry Walker, several managers in the National League, had warned the Reds about the A's pitching. Struck him out. One run, one hit. At the end of the first half inning, one nothing Cincinnati. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Legends of the Fall is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. If I ran the post office, there'd be a way to send paperwork and merchandise overseas that gets attention. Something that says, open me. I'm important. But it's got to save money. Real money. And go to all my key markets. Plus, it would have value. It would be reliable. And fast. Global Priority Mail. It's happening at your U.S. Postal Service. We deliver. It's time for Bernie Williams to get into the batter's box and face a rock-hard ball coming at him from just 60 feet, 6 inches away. Battling sinkers, sliders, curves, knucklers, change-ups, fork balls, fastballs, and the occasional brush back. But Bernie doesn't sweat it. Hey, he's got a whole tenth of a second to react. I got my Harley for just eight dollars. <laughs> I moved to LA for twelve bucks. <laughs> we went to Club Med for eighteen dollars. <laughs> Smart investors know it. You get the lowest commissions of any deep discount broker with Ameritrade. Trade online for just eight dollars. Touchtone trade for twelve dollars. Or live broker trade just eighteen dollars. I just sold a ton of steel for eight bucks. And that's the lowest price per trade, no matter how many shares you trade. Just call one eight hundred five seven three nine three seven zero. I sold the store for twelve bucks. Plus, your first five trades are commission-free when you open an account with Ameritrade. Call 1-800-573-9370 or visit our website. Trading my Fiat for BMW. Unloaded BMW for Mercedes. <laughs> All before lunch. Ameritrade. Smartest way to trade, period. Join the team with a Classic Sports Network t-shirt. Just call 1-888-LEGENDS and for only $11.95, you can wear the t-shirt that tells the world you're a Classic Sports fan. It comes in gray or tan, so please specify color and size. And now, for the first time, Classic Sports is offering our limited edition cap. It's only $13.95 and available in both green and white. So call 1-888-LEGENDS and order your Classic Sports gear today. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports.
The A's cheerleading section behind the A's dugout. They were busy last night. They'll be busy again today. Campy Campanaris leads off against Jim McLaughlin. Fouls the first pitch back. McLaughlin has pitched only four innings of relief since September 23rd. This year he won nine and lost eight. He's 29 years old, lives in Florence, Kentucky. To the box. One out. Campanaris that had three hits and 15 times up. Here's Matty Alou. He's had only one hit in 13 times. Made a pair of good fielding plays last night, though. Freckled faced Jim McLaughlin, the Huckleberry Finn of the Cincinnati pitching staff. Outside for a ball. This is his second World Series game. He started the second game of the 1970 series, losing six to five. Ground ball to shortstop. Darrell Cheney nails him, and they're two down. And Joe Rudy has had five for 15. One homer, one RBI. And his catch up against the left field wall off Dennis Menke, game two, will never be forgotten by those who follow the World Series. Cincinnati's ahead, one to nothing. This is the last of the first inning. McLaughlin is not quite like Dillingham, but he does throw a lot of breaking stuff. Dillingham was very effective with sinker balls and breaking pitches. It's a strike, and that's the kind of stuff that Dillingham was getting him out on night before last. McLaughlin acquired by the Reds, along with pitchers Pedro Borbon and Vern Geyser for Alex Johnson and Chico Ruiz after the 1969 season. One ball, one strike. Lines it foul. That's why Rudy's so hard to defend against. He'll splatter the ball into the right field corner, the outside pitch. He'll hit the pitch through the middle straight away. And he'll pull an inside pitch to the left field corner. And you can see big gaps out there in the Cincinnati outfield. Gap between Rose and Tolan. Quite a gap there between Geronimo and Tolan. Look at that gap, see? You have to scatter out against him. One-two pitch. Struck him out on a breaking pitch. McLaughlin looked very good in that first inning. At the end of inning number one, Cincinnati leading one to nothing. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. This Classic Sports Network presentation is brought to you by Celebrity Cruises. Alongside Thurman Munson, Carlton Fisk was the premier American League catcher of the 1970s. This combined dominant defense behind the plate with prodigious power at the plate. Second only to Johnny Bench in career home runs by a catcher, Carlton Fisk, Classic Sports Network Athlete of the Week. We all inhabit a place that frankly gets on our nerves. We gotta get out of that place. And a celebrity cruise can get us out of that place. Celebrity Cruises. Exceeding expectations. Awarded five stars by Fieldings and the top premium cruise line rating by Berlitz. I love my home and I want to stay here, even though I need some extra care. That's why I'm so glad to get free health care at home through nurse providers. Nurse providers help with personal and medical care and even cleaning and errands. With nurse providers, I get free medical care at home. You should call nurse providers and see if you qualify. Call nurse providers at 1-800-500-NURSE. This has been a public service announcement from nurse providers and this station. Many have witnessed its awesome power. 
It is a strategic device of immense importance. It can bring into range an entire nation, a single neighborhood, or any segment of the populace. And most remarkable of all, it's growing even stronger as advertisers and viewers use it in record numbers. From Main Street to Madison Avenue, America's sold on cable. To advertise your business locally, call Cable Rep Advertising at 660-0500. Now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. The Reds had the best road record, as you see, in the major leagues this year. That's quite a road percentage, 679. Anytime you play 500 ball on the road, you figure you're doing well. And they need a road victory today to stay alive. Tony Perez leads the World Series in base hits, and he slams that one into the left field corner. It is a fair ball. Rudy plays the carom. Perez is coming. And he'll be in there with a double to lead off the second. Again, the Reds hitting the first pitch. Heard a lot of teams in the American League do that with Hunter. They know he's a strike thrower, and he's thrown two high strikes to start these first two innings. So Tony Perez is now batting over 500 in these five games. Rose led off the first with a homer. Perez leads off the second with a double. Dennis Menke. One hit in 13 times. Ball one. Mando even with a bag at third. Two balls and no strikes. Two-o pitch. Two and one. He's trying to go to right field. Move Perez over. Get him over to third in any manner he can. The Reds manager. The two-one pitch coming up to Dennis Menke. There's the bunt. Hunter will have to play at the first. He took that quick look to third. Perez had a good jump on the bunt. It would have been a real gamble play there. So give Menke a sacrifice. And he's out for the pitcher to the first baseman. Cesar Geronimo coming up. Cesar Geronimo, one hit in 11 times. The Reds have a runner on third. One out, and the Oakland A's bring the infield in at first and third, and two steps off the grass at short and second. Strike to Geronimo. Last night with the infield in, Manguel's ground ball went through for the winning hit. With the infield back, it would have been easily handled by the second baseman. But they had to come in and try and choke off the winning run. One and one. There's an old saying, bring the infield in, a 300 hitter becomes a 400 hitter, and a 250 hitter, a 300 hitter. One ball, one strike. Perez at third, one out. The Reds ahead, one nothing. Second inning. Fly ball in the shallow left. Going to be a foul ball. Rudy grabs it. Perez is holding. Two down. And the batter now will be the Red shortstop, Daryl Cheney, who's gone hitless in six times. Dick Williams has already held up four fingers in the corner of the dugout, indicating I don't think they want to pitch to Cheney. And tennis now. Telling Hunter, put him on. Cheney wanted a cut. This happens uh, occasionally. Pitcher gets careless, lobs one too close to the plate. Batter can reach out and poke it somewhere. After Finger slipped that one by bench the other night on an intentional walk fake, I don't think the red batters are going to go up there asleep anymore. Janey's on first. Perez is a third. They're two down. And Jim McLaughlin, the Reds pitcher, 
as the battery's lifetime average in the major leagues is 126. He's hit a home run in each of the last three years. Hit one in Cincinnati this season. They're going to play him straight away. Nothing. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. If I ran the post office, there'd be a way to send paperwork and merchandise overseas that gets attention. Something that says, open me. I'm important. But it's got to save money. Real money. And go to all my key markets. Plus, it would have value. It would be reliable. Fast. Global Priority Mail. It's happening at your U.S. Postal Service. We deliver. He never chewed tobacco till he was six. He never had a drink till he was seven. He stole whatever loose change was around the house on his own testimony. And Ruth said once, I was a bad kid. He knew who he was. He knew that he was Babe Ruth. He knew he put the people in the park. He knew that he was the emperor of American baseball. Bill introduced him to Babe, and you know what Babe said to the governor of Arkansas? Hello, kid. Glad to meet you. That is his remark. It wasn't glad to know you, governor, or nothing like that. Hello, kid. Glad to know you. Dickie likely fell through a hole. It embarrassed him, see, but that was Babe. And you figure the things he did, and the way he lived and the way he played, you got to figure he was more than an animal, even. There never was anyone like him. And then, in his old man's voice, Joe Dugan said, he was a god. Derby, only on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Last half the second inning, Mike Epstein, Sal Bando, and George Hendrick come to the plate for the A's. Epstein is looking for his first hit of the series. He hasn't had a hit in 10 times up. He's the only player hitless in the A's lineup. Kurt, I would imagine that with Jackson out of the lineup, the added pressure on Epstein has really made a difference on how they pitch to him. Lang Epstein is a pull hitter to right field. Very little breeze today, a hazy sun shining right now. Soft curve of the ball to him. Last complete game for this man was August 21st. 2 0. Oh. He's averaged just over three walks every nine innings this season, a bit higher than his lifetime control average in the majors. Pretty fair control. Two balls, no strikes. 3 0. Oh. Epstein looks down to Irv Norn. Third base coach. The hitter take. Here's the 3 0 pitch. He's on. 450. And there's a the difference, Kurt. They're just not giving him many pitches to hit, particularly ones that he can hit out. When Jackson's in the lineup, they bat back to back, and it's hard to pitch around one. Sal Bando. Three hits and 15. The captain of the A's team.
Now warm-up action in the Cincinnati bullpen. There's a ball to Bando. Looks like Pedro Borbon warming up. We talked about the A's being a young veteran team. That is, they have three or four years of experience yet they're young. And that's an ideal state if you can arrive at. He has to drive in the deep center. Drifting back, Bobby Cohen almost to the warning track, hauls it in. Epstein goes back to first. Joe Rudy's 26. Bando is 26 or 28. All in their mid-20s or late 20s. And they're going to be a team to reckon with in this American League. Unless they go to sleep or they get crippling injuries. George Hendrick. One hit and 13. He's 22 years old. He can run, he can throw, he can catch the ball. Can he hit big league pitches? He hasn't proved it yet. There's a strike to him. He's hitting the minors. The Reds are ahead, 1-0. This is the last of the second. Pete Rose hits the first pitch for a home run. One ball, one strike. Notice McLaughlin pitching low on deck is Gene Tennis. Given these right handers, a lot of low breaking stuff. That's his pattern. One one delivery. Into the dirt, Johnny Bench stopping up. Two balls and a strike. Tom McLaughlin, as we look at Johnny Bench behind the plate, McLaughlin has an excellent curveball and a sinker. And with a National League umpire behind the plate, they have a tendency to give you the low pitches. And because they sit on the inside corner, a little bit more of the outside corner, which could be an advantage to McLaughlin. The count is two and one to Hendrick. Throw to first, Epstein there. There's a fly ball down the right field line. That could be real trouble. Just foul. Foul by a couple of feet. Let's watch that last pitch over again. They've been giving Hendrick a steady diet of breaking balls on the outside part of the plate as they do many young hitters. Ben sitting almost on the outside corner. Just a little weak wave at it to foul it off. Two balls, two strikes. A roller, this is a tough play. He can run, but Lawson loses the ball. And those A's cheerleaders start up again in back of the dugout. Here it is again, a little topper, a very difficult play for McLaughlin. I do not believe he would have had Hendricks anyway, as Hendricks really flew out of the batter's box with a good jump. Runners on first and second. One out. The base hit for Hendrick. And Gene Tennis, the batting hero of the series for Oakland. He's had four hits, three of them have been home runs. He had a home run and a single in the ninth inning last night. Ball one. Gene Tennis is the second catcher ever to hit three homers in a World Series. The first is Yogi Berra in 1956 against the Dodgers. Yogi's here at the series, the manager of the Mets. Ball two. There's something to think about. If Gene Tennis gets on, or if he even makes an out, and they don't get a double play, Dick Green may be out of the lineup before he bats once. Well, watch for that, Monty. Dick Green, in the late season, the A's were pinch hitting for their second baseman. Sometimes even in the first or second inning. Two balls and no strikes to Gene Tennis. There's a long drive. That one's going. It is good.
Charlie Finley, the fastest two-banner man in the West. The A's lead now, three to one. That one foul back. What were we saying about Gene Tennis? Along with Yogi Berra, three homers. Gene Tennis now is the first catcher to hit four homers in a World Series. He hit only five all year. He's on his way to the most valuable player of this World Series. Kurt, as we said before, in a different way, though, it's kind of hard to hit him sitting in the bullpen where he's been most of the year. Dave Duncan had hit 19, the regular catcher. Backhanded beautifully by Dennis Menke. He throws Dick Green out. After Tennis had cleaned the bases, they didn't hit for Green. Two down, nobody on. And Gene Tennis has tied a World Series record, ladies and gentlemen, and takes the place alongside of the fantastic Babe Ruth, who hit four homers in the 26 World Series. Lou Gehrig in the 28 World Series. A strike. Duke Snyder in 52 hit four homers. Snyder again in 55. And Hank Bauer in 1958. There's a strike. These were all seven game series, except the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, who did it in four games. So tennis is right alongside of Ruth and Gehrig. And Jim Hunter strikes out. But the A's took the lead on the three run homer by tennis. The two hits, the score at the end of two, three to one Oakland. Well, Gene Tennis's sudden power upset not only the Reds, but their fans as well. After he hit the two home runs in Cincinnati, a man sitting behind home plate publicly threatened to shoot Tennis if he hit another one. And the fan was arrested with a revolver in his pocket. And for the remaining games in Cincinnati, Tennis was given around-the-clock FBI protection, and he was not allowed to travel with his teammates. In fact, he was taken to and from the ballpark in an unmarked car. Gary, that's a little tough to play like that. Well, not only a backup catcher, but uh, to, it's tough enough to hit, let alone have a death threat against you. And uh, tennis, uh, he rose to the occasion. But a, but a death threat, you know, uh, in Pittsburgh, I, were you ever involved in a death threat of any kind? No, no, not really. Well, in Pittsburgh, Ralph Kiner was once uh, a death threat, and we had a team meeting, and George Metkovich said he wouldn't play that day. And when they asked him why, uh, Catfish said, because of Kiner, the death threat. And he said, what's that got to do with you? He said, what's Kiner's number? He said, four. He said, what's mine? 44. He said, what if that guy's nearsighted? <laughs> so he didn't want to play, man. I don't blame him. I don't him. blame him. <laughs> that guy had double vision. Bye-bye, right. Kenfish, right? <laughs> well, unlike tennis, Pete Rose was expected to hit well in the series. Until this game, he had not. But he led off the top of the third with his second hit of the game, only to be stranded as the Reds failed to score. When we come back... It's the bottom of the third, and the A's look to add to their 3-1 to one lead. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. This Classic Sports Network presentation is brought to you by Celebrity Cruises. <laughs> We all reside in a place where people can reach us at three in the morning. We gotta get out of that place. And a celebrity cruise can get us out of that place. Celebrity Cruises, exceeding expectations. Awarded five stars by Fieldings and the top premium cruise line rating by Berlitz. Being a catcher's no walk in the park. Take Mike Piazza. This guy's a human target for a flamethrower who can reach speeds up to 100 miles an hour. Even foul tips to the mask go with the territory. And he's got to call pitches, handle pickoffs, pitch outs, and pop ups. Not to mention human freight trains hurtling toward him. Spikes first. Yeah! Try telling Mike Piazza baseball isn't a contact sport.
Classic Sports Network, where the legends play ball. We now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. There's the Oakland A's record this year, and like the Reds, the A's were best in the American League on the road. They're at home right now, though, and they're in the lead, and they have the top of their order up, Bert Campanaris, who tapped out to the pitcher his first time. Gene Tennis's three-run homer is the difference right now. Track one to Campanaris. Gene Tennis, four homers in this series. Hit the Menke foul. Menke's been playing tight against Campanaris, who's wrapped that ball solidly to him several times, and Menke's had those quick reactions that you have to have at third base. Do or you don't. One and two. Jim McLaughlin's 11th pro season, beginning in the California Angel organization in 62. Campanaris is caught looking. Strikeout number three for McLaughlin. And the batter is Matty Alou. I've never seen Alou look so futile at the plate as he has in this series, Monty. He hasn't even hit the ball hard in the uh, series, and it's strange because he had no slumps at all after joining the A's in 31 games. He was getting a hit or two almost every day. He is one of the most difficult men in baseball to strike out. Each season, one ball, no strikes to him. The A's lead 3-1. There's a fly ball out in the right field. Geronimo waiting for it. And we have two down. Joe Rudy struck out his first time. Two out, nobody on. The A's out in front, 3-1. Have Joe Rudy at the bat. With Mike Epstein at death. He drills it. That's fading foul, though. See all those banners out there? They, uh, they had him strung all the way across the bleachers, and the Reds went to the umpires and asked them to take him down. Some of the white banners, especially in left center and in center field, were distracting the batters. Joe Rudy hit by the pitch ball. Watch Joe get plunked once again. That close stance, McLaughlin trying to move him back off the plate. He has the good breaking ball. He has to throw inside to protect that breaking pitch. Rudy making no move at all. He may have been guessing curve right in the back. Mike Epstein walked his first time. The Oakland A's have two out. And once again, action in the Cincinnati bullpen springing up. He did not commit himself. Now they check with a third base umpire. Honey Chick, he says, no, he didn't swing. How do they tell? It used to be if they broke their wrist, they'd call it a, uh, a strike. But now most umpires will tell you if the bat comes over the plate, halfway over the plate, they're going to call a strike on him. Two balls, no strike. The home plate umpire gets blocked out in his vision many times. Where the umpire on the baseline has a better uh, opportunity to see the play. Two balls, no strike. Pedro Bourbon heating up again. Three and nothing. Jim McLaughlin, when he would pitch for the Angels in the American League, Against the A's, didn't fare well. He had three lifetime wins and five losses. And he never won a game in this park. He lost three decisions here when he was with the California Angels. Three balls, no strikes. Bando went after the 3-0 pitch and grounds out. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Three innings are gone in game five of the World Series. 
Our score is Oakland 3, Cincinnati 1. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. It's not here. It's not here. And you'll never find it in here. Is your socket set always missing the one piece you need? Are you tired of wasting time trying to find the right size wrench? Wouldn't it be nice if you had one precision tool that could replace all these? Well, now you can. Introducing the Smart Wrench, the patented new tool that automatically adjusts to fit any size bolt or nut, metric or standard, instantly. Watch how it works. Smart Wrench's interlocking teeth automatically conform to the size of nut or bolt you're using. Need a half inch socket? Smart Wrench has it covered. Now you need a one inch wrench, you're all ready to go. Look, this man is using a conventional socket set and he has to change sockets with every bolt. But with the Smart Wrench, one tool does it all. Even wing nuts, eye hooks, and square head nuts. Smart Wrench has them all covered. What about stripped and broken bolts? Smart Wrench grips where others slip. No more bruised knuckles and no more lost pieces. Missing sockets are a thing of the past. And Smart Wrench is made of top quality chrome vanadium steel. You can't break it. Look what happened when we put Smart Wrench on the torque bar, set to maximum. Watch this one inch bolt snap in half and not even a scratch on the Smart Wrench. Now that's strong. Use it on your car, motorcycle, bike, boat, camper, around the house, around the garage, even in the garden. Smart Wrench replaces this $200 set of conventional sockets and you can't lose a piece. Order Smart Wrench now and you'll receive the entire kit. The Smart Wrench, Ratchet, Extender, and Carrying Case, all for only $19.95. And remember, the complete set is covered by our unconditional lifetime money-back guarantee, so you can't go wrong. Order Smart Wrench today. To order Smart Wrench for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, call 1-800-443-8300 or send a check or money order to the address listed. That number again, 1-800-443-8300. Two study years gone by, you could watch Truman's surprise win over Dewey in 1948. Or check out the surprise win of the Miracle Mets in the 1969 World Series. You could study Nixon's near-perfect sweep in the 1972 election. Or watch Total Perfection as the 72 Dolphins become the NFL's only undefeated team. If you see history a little differently, watch the Classic Years in Sports, Sunday and Thursday at 7, only on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Tony Perez doubled his first time up. First ball swinging, a strike to him. And he hit the first pitch of the second for a double. Perez, the leading hitter in the World Series. A one strike pitch. One and one. He's facing a man, Jim Hunter, who's not lost the game since August 25th. Five to three to Baltimore. He has won six since then, five during the season, and a World Series victory. Ball two. He did not win or lose against the Tigers in two playoff games. His club didn't get him any runs. He and Lowich tangled twice in a couple of a great pitching duels. Menke on deck. Two and one. Rounded to shortstop. Campaner. Over that team, one down. Dennis Menke sacrificed his first time. It's a high drive to deep left. That one is sailing back, and it is gone. A home run for Dennis Menke. And the Reds now are only one run down. Hanging breaking pitch. Perez missed on the first pitch to him, a breaking ball that Hunter got high and inside. He fouled it off, but Menke didn't let it get by him. Watch that home run swing once again. Notice how much he chokes up. But he does have good power. A belt high inside the hanging curve. And our score is Oakland 3, Cincinnati 2. Ball one to Cesar Geronimo, who fouled the left field his first time. The Oakland bullpen is busy again. 
Hamilton a left-hander, Locker a right-hander. One ball, one strike. Three homers in this game. Two by the Reds and Gene Tennis for the A's. The Reds have had four hits, the A's two. Foul off the mask of tennis that shook him up. Mm. Eating dinner with a straw tonight. Notice he wears a soft cap, a regular cap. Johnny Bench wears a helmet all the time, even behind the plate. A one-two pitch. Foul back. Second strikeout for Hunter. Daryl Cheney was walked intensely his first time. We're in the top of the fourth inning. The A's are leading the Reds three to two. Ted Ulander has come out on deck. There's a fly ball hit the deep center. Hendrick is out there drawing a beat on it, hauls it in. And the Reds are out in the fourth. The score at the end of three and a half, three to two over. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. So I'm back. They're certainly not wearing much. I know. In my town. Hey, 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 lady. What is 24-7? 24-7 is 24 hours a day, seven, seven days, days a week. week. You want to trade hats? Is this real Dalmatian? Watch your back, watch your back. Oh, very nice. Everything all, all the, the time. time. We're here to please Goodness, you're here. David, David, I don't think so. I can't believe it. Oh, man, these fish nets are riding me. Vegas, I'll see you next month. You protected your face all night. Why stop in the locker room? The Norelco Reflex Action Razor. Anything closer could be too close for comfort. Another look with Sean Pavillon. What an effort by Billy Buckner. Man, oh man, what a play. The red badge of courage on his chest. Billy Buck had paid his dues after years of hustle in Dodger Blues. Great times at Wrigley bereft of booze. Then on to Fenway where baseball imitates art and takes over one's life. Where the dual-edged knife of tragedy and strife are embraced as a rite of passage. A legacy without dissent of voice. Fifth generation, they have no choice. And with the socks but an out from glory, a slow roller and Buckner's feet became the story. Little roller up along first, behind the bag! It gets through Buckner and the Mets win it! To define this man by a moment in time, lies somewhere between punishment and crime. We now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. The Reds' Jim McLaughlin walked third baseman Sal Bando to lead off the bottom of the fourth. And after getting behind 2-0 on George Henrik, he was replaced by Pedro Borbon. We now return to the bottom of the fourth with Bando on first, nobody out, and the A's are leading 3-2. to two. And the first pitch to George Hendrick was a strike by Borbone at first base of Sal Bando. It's 2-1 and one now to George Hendrick. There's the bunt. Over the glove, but uh, Perez very alertly backed up Borbone to let the ball skip over his mitt. If Perez had not been there, Hendrick would have beaten that one out. Hendrick gets a hand as they wave those batters again. Those batters have become a conversation piece there. Charlie Finley started out with 250. There he is, the quickest two-handed batter man in the West. Yesterday, he ordered 350 more, and today he ordered 2,000 delivered here. They're going to walk Gene Tennis. Bill 
Mr. Home Run Slugger of this series, who has tied the immortal Ruth and Gary, among others, and Duke Snyder, with the most home runs hit in the World Series. Dick Green is on deck. They may hit for him. We'll see. Gonzalo Marquez is coming out to bat for Dick Green. And Tommy Hall, a left-hander, getting ready in a hurry in that Cincinnati bullpen. The hand is for Marquez, who made the World Series when Daryl Knowles, an ace reliever of the A's, broke his thumb. He bloops it into left center, so it's the answer if they set. This is going to the score. Green Pennis goes to third. He's safe. Marquez left the game to a standing ovation. Alan Lewis replaces him at first base for a pitch as a pitch runner. Marquez received a standing ovation as he raced from first base into the A's dugout. And here they've got the suicide squeeze. They've got him hung up, and he's out as tennis pushes Menke away, and it backfires on the A's. Down to second went the pinch runner, Alan Lewis. Jim Hunter failed to make contact. Watch the tag by Menke. Tennis, the dead duck, decides to try and bowl him over. Menke holds out of the ball as Cheney comes on to back the play up. Here he breaks, right as the ball is released by Bourbon. He's hung up. Bench running him back, running him back, getting him going to the direction he came from. Menke makes the tag. That strike to Jim Hunter at 0-2. The A's had a run in to take the lead 4-2. They had runners on first and third with one out. And then the suicide squeeze backfired on them. Bourbon's fastball is outside. Well, Gene Tennis tied an all-time World Series record with four homers in a series. And Marquez has tied a series record now with three pinch hits. Ground ball foul. Jim Hunter is one of the best hitting pitchers in the major leagues. That's Alan Lewis, the pinch runner at second. And Kurt, one of the A's best bunters, too. It's unusual to see him miss uh, a pitch like that on a bunt. And he got out in front of it. Bourbon just put too much on it. Two out. Fly ball hit into left center. Bobby Tolan in front of it. And the sides retired. The A's picked up another run. They had one hit. There were no errors. They left one at the end of four. The A's four. The Reds two. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Hey, Sam, listen, I'm nervous about the Mulligan presentation. I mean, how are we going to print out all those color pages, scan in those color logos, capture that frame of video, fax a proof, and make all those color copies? by five. Forget golf today, pal. The Brother MFC 7000, the total color solution, with all the color versatility you need exactly when you need it. Sam, it's me again. We've only got two more hours. I hope everything's under control. Sam, why aren't you picking up? Sam? Sam! Still shaving with blades? We know how you feel about that. The Norelco Reflex Action Razor. Anything closer could be too close for comfort. It has a lubricating comfort strip. And for a lot of guys, that's not much comfort. The Norelco Reflex Action Razor. Anything closer could be too close for comfort. NHL 98 asking who melts ice. Take a shot. Line four. Bure, the rocket man. Yeah, he's off the eye chart. Show him the bye-bye strike. Ta-ta, Mr. Autobahn. Line three. How about that Zamboni guy, eh? He's pretty good, eh? No, eh? Mike from Sin City. Beezer is a blur. Split, hit, split. Nobody rides for free. Uh-ho, oh, at 10 from the Russian judge. 1-888-MY-HOUSE. Talking who's who of Mach 2 and dropping off D. NHL 98, the ultimate judge. EA Sports. It's in the game. Attention computer shoppers, free mouse pad with every laptop. Hey you, check stand date. Kevin, Sally, you're about to blow it. Don't pay retail.
Gateway Systems feature Intel Pentium 2 processors. Call us and we'll build one for you. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. The Oakland A's were now one win away from their first World Series title. That's pretty impressive for a team that wasn't exactly baseball's version of the Cleavers. But the players were united in one area, their dislike of team owner Charlie Finley. Gary, your thoughts on Charlie Finley. Well, Charlie Finley was a little bit like a, a pioneer, kind of like Bill Veck when he uh, brought in some of his things into baseball, Eddie Goodell, and uh, I guess it was Charlie Finley who thought about the orange baseball, mm -hmm. and uh, he brought in the donkey, and, uh, you know, he changed things around, the free-spirited look of uh, long hair, mustaches. Yeah, but he tried to force nicknames on people. He wanted to change Vita Blue, uh, and, and then he gave Catfish that uh, nickname of Catfish right. uh, because he was supposed to have walked after high school and gone fishing or something. I mean, what did that have to do with baseball? It was was he just trying to jazz it up? I think he was. And uh, Vita, he had that written on his back instead of blue. And, you know, Catfish, he just got to be known that way. It wasn't uh, Jim Hunter. It was Catfish Hunter. So I think that really what Charlie O'Finley was trying to do was bring a little bit different light to the game of baseball. He didn't bring a whole lot of money to those players because they were complaining about that, I remember. Well, he eventually wanted to trade them all off, and Bowie Kuhn once again stepped in and stopped all of that nonsense because he wanted to trade them off to Boston and the Yankees and try and get his money back before they became free agents. He was different. But say what you want about Charlie Finley, but the A's would not have been closing in on a world championship if it weren't for his shrewd eye for talent. And make no mistake about it, he had a shrewd eye. Now, the Reds had plenty of talent of their own, and they were mounting a comeback. In the fifth, Joe Morgan scored all the way from first on Bobby Tolan's single to pull Cincinnati within one. We now pick up the game with one out in the top of the seventh. Raleigh Fingers is on in relief as the A's try to keep Cincinnati from tying this game. There's the skipper, Dick Williams, with pitching coach Bill Posdell right next to him. Oh, there's that curveball. He makes it look so easy. Tennis touches the outside leg, indicating he wants the ball out there, and he got it out there, just barely missing. Boy, they've taken some close pitches here today with two strikes. There's Pete Rose on deck. The firing in this series has been superlative. Missed with a breaking ball outside. Raleigh got ahead of him at 0 2 and wasted a couple with teasers. Missed inside. He is now at 3 and 2 on the second man in a row. With the top of the batting order up, and Concepcion can run. Fingers is going to have to tighten up the old shoelaces, and he's doing just that. Big pitch for him right here. Into center field, and easy George Hendricks makes the catch. Two down. The A's fans are waving the pennants and roaring here. Pete Rose, who hit the first pitch of this ball game over the right field wall for a home run, followed in the third inning with a single. Catfish Hunter got him in the fifth on a ground out to short. That fastball really had a tail on it. You could see it moving away from the left-handed batter. Joe Morgan hoping to get a shot with somebody on here. Strike two. You could see the target that Gene Tennis gave that time, an over-exaggerated target. He wanted that pitch low and away, and he all but sat down on the ground to give the target. Tennis has been doing an excellent job behind the plate. See him decoy inside on Rose, then go on the outside corner. Now back inside, and Rose jumped out of the way. 
There's a shadow here with the bright sunshine that will allow a batter to see where the catcher is standing. That's the reason they move around a little bit. Drive to left field. Rudy is going deep. He's got it. He ran out of track up there. We go to the last half of the seventh inning. The score, the Oakland A's four, the Cincinnati Reds three. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Legends of the Fall is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. If I ran the post office, there'd be a way to send paperwork and merchandise overseas that gets attention. Something that says, open me. I'm important. But it's got to save money, real money, and go to all my key markets. Plus, it would have value, It'd be reliable, and fast. Global Priority Mail. It's happening at your U.S. Postal Service. We deliver. We all inhabit a place that, frankly, gets on our nerves. We got to get out of that place. And a celebrity cruise can get us out of that place. Celebrity Cruises. Exceeding expectations. Awarded five stars by Fieldings and the top premium cruise line rating by Berlitz. Classic Sports Network presents This Day in Classic Sports, October 20th, 1993. I am my brother's keeper after this. What if you could collect life's greatest moments? If you could just hang on to them and not let any slip away? And what if every time you remembered them, they were just as vivid, just as great? On Classic Sports Network, memories don't pass you by, nor are they carted off and filed away. They're front and center, and even sideways. Classic Sports Network, the only network where once-in-a-lifetime moments happen 24 hours a day. October 20th, 1993, skating in his 1,052nd game and for the first time against brother Brent, superstar Wayne Gretzky scores his usual three, leading L.A. to victory over Tampa Bay. Tune in every day for this day in classic sports. We now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Here at the Oakland Coliseum with Concepcion, the new shortstop, on your left, and Clay Carroll, the right-hander, on your right. Here at the Coliseum, 50,000 fans are standing and singing, God Bless America, rather than take me out to the ball game. And there's the song leader, Charlie Finley. He's been the leading character of the World Series on stage. He has done that one other time here at the Coliseum, had the crowd sing God Bless America with 50,000, 51,000 actually here on a Monday night this year. And I think it's a great touch. It's just a fantastic thing to see this kind of spirit and we're better to hear it than at a World Series. Here is Gene Tennis who has put Lucasville, Ohio right in the middle of the map. Strength call from Carroll. And we'll see how Carroll does today. He was a losing pitcher. They gave up the winning hits last night, and the A's come back last of the ninth inning. Another nice stop by Dennis Minke. And it's there in time for the out. One down in the seventh inning. Minke has probably been defensively the most consistent player in this series. He's made him look easy, just gliding over to his right. Formerly a shortstop until knee surgery. He still has pretty good range at third. Clay Carroll, in the true tradition of most short relievers, said after the game last night, it was a game I made one bad pitch, but I'll be ready again tomorrow. Ball one. These short relievers are a special breed. Ted Kubiak is batting. They call him Mr. Smooth. Get a good 
jump out of the box, you don't usually get one, and you tap a ball or get jammed. Carroll thought he had to hurry a little bit more than this. Pete give out from under him. Kubiak's got a hit. And you wonder how they score this one? A base hit. Raleigh Fingers comes up, and this guy can swing the bat. I don't know if Dick Williams will have him swinging it here, but he hit a home run in Texas this year. Where do they get all these pitchers that can hit, Monty? Hey, they have a lot of fun uh, pregame batting drills. The A's pitchers have the game, as do all clubs' pitchers, but Oakland does have a bunch of real good hitting pitchers. to Joe Morgan and fingers dropped the perfect bunt down the third base line. He really did in that ball. Oakland leading four to three. Watch how far as Menke comes in. Johnny Bench ranges from behind the plate. Yogi Berra is one of the finest at moving out behind from behind home plate on bunts. Bench may even top Yogi. They say he's a one-handed catcher, but on that pickup, as they teach all catchers, he goes at it with the glove and rakes it over into the other hand. Here's Bert Campaneras. The A's are a hit away from another run. Breaking ball, strike call, and he had that one up around the letters. Kubiak backs into second base. Let's give a tribute to Tom Hall. He pitched two shutout innings in relief for his remove. Johnny Bench back, but he'll run out of room before that one lands. It's in the seats. So quickly, Carroll is ahead of Campanaris at two strikes. Sunshine is broken out here in the East Bay. Carroll has to be the man now. They've already used Bourbon and Hall. That's their bullpen. Unless they get Simpson or Nolan in. Starters who have had some arm trouble. And the A's are down to their uh, ace, of course. Uh, Vita Blue is not in the bullpen today. He is scheduled to start tomorrow if the World Series goes to Cincinnati. So Dick Williams did not send him down there today. So it's up to Raleigh Fingers and Clay Carroll, it looks like. He got him looking on a fastball, and he really had him set up for that. Campanaris unhappy, but it's all over in the seventh. The score, Oakland 4, Cincinnati 3. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Hello there. I'd like to welcome you to Psychic Talk USA. What happened to you when you were seven years old, sweetheart? What happened to me when I was seven? Yeah. Uh, what happened to you with your mom when you were seven? Uh, she sent me to my father. Yeah. That was a hard thing for you, wasn't it? Yeah. Are you astounded by what this woman has just told you? Did you think that anyone knew that but you and your mother and your father? Yeah. No, nobody knew it. She couldn't have known it. You got a move coming up, a career move coming up for you. Yeah, I'm and getting ready to move overseas. Well. Oh, um, so <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way you do. I want to get you involved right now. Yeah, I'm talking about you. So I want you to pick up your phone and call us right now. By calling right now, we promise you 10 minutes with our expert psychics at no cost to you at all. I mean, it's free. It's our treat. So why don't you call us now? Call in now. Everyone will get to talk to their psychic for a full 10 minutes. This one's free, so don't miss it. Dial right now. Call 1-800-917-9199. Sports Center is the kind of show that you just have to try new ideas. Greetings, I'm Linda Cohn. <laughs> to try new experiments all the time. Sports Center back with you. Golf the topic. Good evening, and welcome to Sports Center. We're always trying to be on the cutting edge. Hello, America. I'm Mary Lou Retton. And I'm Steve Levy. You tuned into America's program, Sports Center, coming at you. You have to push the envelope. You have to try out new things. To advertise your business locally, call Cable Rep Advertising at 660-0500. We're not slackers. We are fighters. We're not spoiled. But we have many gifts. We are not wild. We're just crazy about life. We are not filled with hate. We're filled with hope. We're not the problem. We are the future. We're not Generation X. We are Generation Excellent. We're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. 
We go to the top half of the eighth inning, and here is the toughest part of the Cincinnati batting order to face Raleigh Fingers, at whom you're looking. There's Joe Morgan to lead it off. Tolan and Bench will follow. Morgan, who hasn't tried to bunt in the series, ran up on that one and took it high for ball one. The Oakland bullpen has a left-hander, Dave Hamilton, and a right-hander, Bob Locker. They ought to be ready if called on. Morgan will do anything to get on. He really believes he can steal anytime he wants. He led uh, the Reds in walks this year, got 115, and he's up there looking at Raleigh Fingers now at 2-0. and oh. He walked in the fifth inning after two were out and turned it into a run. Right down the middle. This year, no one in the major leagues received more free passes than did Joe Morgan. 115 times he got on that way. All three, and Fingers now has the biggest pitch to make he's had to make in the game. Tolan on deck. With Morgan not hitting the ball, the pitchers really hate to walk a guy like that who can turn a walk into a double. He walked him. And they walked him in the fifth that he scored from first base on a single. Here's the situation. Dick Williams is going out. Here's the situation, Kurt, where the A's miss Daryl Knowles more than at any other time. He has one of the best moves to first base at holding runners on and one of the best pickoff moves in the major leagues. And Daryl is out with a broken thumb. He had the lowest earned run average on the A's staff, and I guess he was especially good coming in against a left-hander like Tolan. Right, and uh, Williams would even bring him in against right-handed batters with a good base stealer on just to hold him on there, and it really means a lot to a catcher. Darrell broke his thumb in a most freak way for a pitcher. He only batted about six times all year, and he hit a ball to left field, and turning to run away from the plate, he fell down on his thumb. Here we go. There's the first throw over to first base where Mike Hegan has taken the place of Mike Epstein. That time he meant business. He threw it hard. The Reds have stolen six bases in this series. They just won for the A's. No doubt about their advantage in team speed. Nobody down in the eighth inning. Fingers probably wanting to try to tire him out a little bit. He has to be careful about throwing the ball away there. There's a gigantic amount of room behind the first baseman. Pitch out this time, and he's not going. World Series and the World Championship of Baseball might be on the line with how the Oakland A's handle Joe Morgan on the bases right here. There he goes. Run it out and miss. Throw to second. Too late. He steals it. That time Tolan helped Morgan out. He can hold it on. Morgan with a big lead. Tennis got rid of the ball well, but Morgan just outruns the ball. Now Tolan's job is just to get him over. He bunts at it, misses. Or did he go for it? He did. Morgan hasn't had a hit in this series, but now his speed, his base running, paid off last night and today. Cincinnati bullpen has put a starter out in the hill now. Ross Grimsley, a left-hander, has joined Simpson, a right-hander. Base hit right field. And the loop falls down. Tolan may try for third. He's going to stop at second base. The Reds have the go-ahead run on at second as Matty Alou fell down. That could be a very, very costly slip. And Tolan is really coming up with big hits. He now leads the Reds in RBIs. Knocked in two last night. He's driven in two runs today. An error has been given to Matty Alou in right field, allowing Tolan to go to second. A tie ball game at four all. That leadoff walk is always a bad omen, and Fingers has found it costly here. Now Johnny Bench. He ran into the ball. Was he in front of the plate or not? Home plate up 
Fielder Bob Engel appealing immediately to first base umpire Bat Bill Haller. Williams out now saying, I want you to appeal. Now Haller's coming in as Engel says, nope, I did not make the call. Haller did. Bench was in the batter's box when the ball hit him. Had he been out, the ball hit him in fair territory, he would have been out. One strike to count on Johnny Bench. Bobby Tolan at second, carrying the go-ahead run. There's nobody down in game number five. Bench wasn't bunting that one. He went for the seats in left field. It's two strikes on him. Mando holding Tolan at second, throwing to first for the out. One away. And now Tony Perez is led all players in the series with base hits. Sal Bando in from third to talk to Raleigh Fingers. Joe Morgan, who led the majors in walks. Got his specialty to start this big eighth inning for Cincinnati. I'm going to keep your eye on Tolan on second base, too. He's liable to try to go for third and get there where he can score on the sacrifice fly. Kubiak's holding close. That's a ball. With a right-handed batter at the plate, some of the real good base dealers like to go to third because the catcher has to either step behind the batter or out in front of him to make the throw. Got a good cut at a hanging slider right then. That was about letter high. Dennis Menke on deck. Cincinnati Reds and the Oakland A's. Both great come from behind ball clubs all year long. They had to do it in the playoffs. And here they are meeting head on for the world's championship. And a lot of money is at stake. Track two. One of the red players unofficially figured out that the winning share will be about twenty two twenty three thousand dollars a player. The last three years in a row the winners have had eighteen thousand dollars a man and that compares with the first World Series the players got eleven hundred Sparky Anderson facing the dugout. Here goes Tolan the third is swinging a miss. Throw the third. Safe. Ando is furious. Here comes Dick Williams into the picture. Watch Tolan. He's being held close by Kubiak. He did not get a particularly good jump. Bando scoops it out of the dirt. Jim Hunnicek, the umpire. Bando made the sweeping tag, and Tolan got around him. Here it comes again. Bando with his foot in front of the bag. Sweeping tag. Jim Hunnicek, third base umpire, says, you missed him. He slid around you. Now here's Dennis Menke. He is homeward, struck out, and sacrificed. Sparky Anderson calls Menke one of his best clutch hitters, and he has never had a more clutch situation than this right here. We are tied up in the top of the eighth, four and four, and Sparky is on the walk again. It's no balls, two strikes. Pressure on Gene Tennis to make sure in case the ball is in the dirt here. He's got to block it. Fingers is working off the stretch. He could be on a windup, but he wants to take a look at Tolan and hold him over there as long as he can. He got him. So we go to the last half of the eighth inning. The score, Cincinnati 4, Oakland 4. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. 
Hey, Sam, listen, I'm nervous about the mulligan presentation. I mean, how are we going to print out all those color pages, scan in those color logos, capture that frame of video, fax a proof, and make all those color copies? Five, five. Forget golf today, pal. The Brother MFC 7000, the total color solution, with all the color versatility you need exactly when you need it. Sam, it's me again. We've only got two more hours. I hope everything's under control. Sam, why aren't you picking up? Sam? Sam! What goes on inside the brain of a pitcher like John Smoltz? How does he tune out 50,000 screaming fanatics? How does he stay focused with a runner on first who does the 40 and 4 4 and a 342 hitter at the plate? You see, all Smoltz thinks about is this imaginary tunnel with a two inch leather target at the end. And there's only one sound that can break his concentration. Strike three! We were more or less more interested, I believe, the players on our club in keeping the streak alive than Lou was. And I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. I saw that day, if you talk about sadness in any gathering, that's the day I saw photographers cry. We're all out there on the field and the fans, oh, an ovation like I've never heard in my life before or since. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, believe me. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. We now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. 1972 was the first World Series in 13 years in which no pitcher pitched a complete ball game. This was the era in which teams began to recognize the value of setup pitchers. And many pointed to Sparky Anderson as the manager who started it. Now, he's already used four pitchers in this game, and he'll use two more. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Dick Williams, brought in Raleigh Fingers in the fifth inning. Why so early, you think, Eric? Well, I think he was just going for broke. He's up 3-1 in the series, and he figured, well, let's go to a, the closer and hope that he can go the rest of the game. I thought it was too early. I mean, he'd counted on Raleigh Fingers all year, but uh, in fact, he had used even Vita Blue, who had arm problems in that series, and he was the four starter. He was 6-10 and ten during the season, and he used him three times in relief, middle relief, mm -hmm. during the series. Now, you played for Dick Williams, so uh, you kind of got to know his pitching moves. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I think he had the luxury of some good starters with the Montreal Expos and Steve Rogers, Charlie Lee, Bill Gullickson, also mm -hmm. Bill Lee, Ross Grimsley, stuff like that. So they got a little bit used to him, but he would go to the bullpen uh, many a time, and there was a, a bit of disconcern at times about the way he would use his mm -hmm. pitchers. Okay. Now I'll tell you what, we'll rejoin the game in the bottom of the eighth with the Reds and the A's still tied at four apiece. Play Carroll into the wind. Strike call to Matty. Alou, Rudy, and Epstein. Second, third, and fourth hitters for the Oakland A's. That's the lineup that got the run for Cincinnati that tied it up. Alou takes its one and one. Matty today has had one ball out of the infield. It was caught. A fly ball to right. Two and one. Matty splits his grip a little bit on the bat. That's Joe Rudy. And his hands are not right together. See a little space between them. Carroll's going to have to cover first. He got there. Clay Carroll almost fell down again. Both Carroll and Perez make a great play on this one. You can see they get their signals mixed up just slightly. Now Tony with a flip leading Carroll. Just barely beating a Lou. Tough call for Bill Haller, the first base umpire. Now here's Joe Rudy and Dennis Menke, the third baseman, is going to play right even with a bag. Rudy bunted for a base hit here the other night. And he does that for two reasons. He gets base hits once in a while, about nine this year, but he'll draw that third baseman in or he has a better chance to hit it by him if he swings. Ball one to Rudy. 
We are tied up at four and four. Cincinnati has had six hits in Oakland four. On deck, Mike Hegan. Good working fastball. You can see that one turn. One ball, one strike. One and two to Rudy. He had 19 home runs in the season and he hit one in Cincinnati. Missed outside. Sparky Anderson has hit Ross Grimsley in the bullpen. Now he has Jack Billingham. They are his two starters for the two games in Cincinnati if it goes that far. Billingham pitched the best game against Oakland of any Cincinnati pitcher. Rudy pops it up. Pete Rose looking for it in the sign and he's saying he's got it. Boy, when he catches that ball, he really snaps it down to his waist. And Rudy got under that one just a little bit too much or he might have had it out of here. Now for the A's, Mike Hegan comes up to bat. Mike, for the year, hit 329 for the A's, mostly as a pinch hitter. Also used as a late inning defensive replacement. Valuable man to have around. Dick Williams has really used him very well as pinch runner, pinch hitter. Carroll misses low, ball one. Hegan has been up three times in the series without a base hit. He was in one World Series with the New York Yankees when he was really a young kid. Strike, it's one and one. In 1964, when Egan was in the series. Watch Joe Morgan to his right. He beat it. Mike Egan ran up on the grass. Watch Joe get rid of this ball. He knows he can have speed. No chance to call it yourself. Puts on the bag. The ball is still out there coming into Perez's glove. Haller with a couple of close plays. Take a look at it again. Joe flipping the ball over. Put on the bag as the ball gets in the glove. Now Sal Bando. Ball one. They're giving Bando a big gap in right center field. Bobby Tolan playing him well over in left center, and Bando hits the ball a lot with power to right center. There's a drive up the middle. Base hit. Egan is going for third. And now with two down in the last half of the eighth inning, George Hendrick is scheduled to bat here, and we're going to have a pinch hitter, I believe. One of the heroes for the A's last night from Selma, Alabama, Don Mincher comes out. Over on the A's dugout wall, Dick Williams scratches off a name. Oakland has runners first and third in a tie game. And there's that scorecard. You can see a lot of changes made here today. Now Dick Williams with only right-handed pinch hitters left. And out comes Sparky. He didn't make this trip out there last night. He left a right-hander in to pitch to Mencher, and Mencher ripped the ball into right center field for a hit. Sparky Anderson now with a big decision. He has Grimsley to come in against a left-handed batter if he wants him. The pitcher is scheduled to hit in the number eight spot for Cincinnati in the ninth, which means that Geronimo would lead it off, then the pitcher Carroll, if they take Carroll out. And they're bringing Grimsley in to work to Mincher. But Dick Williams will make a change. It's going to be Angel Mangual here against the left-hander. A base hit here could send the A's on top into the top half of the ninth inning. The score is four and four. Mike Hegan is at third base. Sal Bando at first base. There are two down. That's the ball. Strike 
call. Good pitch by Grimsley. He wanted it down. He got it down. I'll tell you, he won't get a base hit on a ball like he hit last night. The infield is back very, very deep. And they've got a force play at first or second. So they can go in the hole and get one. And that's the same kind of ball. Morgan has got it. Throws him out. And we go to the ninth, tied up 4 4. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Lance, British man of war passing skull points. Run the cannon. Arr, I can see my room from here. Let me show you my Vegas. Nice enough to light the whole place up for me. First time to Vegas? Yeah. And you? My third. My 44th trip. Winner, winner, lobster dinner. So much People are so exciting. Mine's a blue convertible. And you, my lad, have to walk the plank. No need to spit. Anything. All the time. That's Las Vegas. Hey, Sam, listen, I'm nervous about the Mulligan presentation. I mean, how are we going to print out all those color pages, scan in those color logos, capture that frame of video, fax a proof, and make all those color copies? By five. Forget golf today, pal. The Brother MFC 7000, the total color solution, with all the color versatility you need exactly when you need it. Sam, it's me again. We've only got two more hours. I hope everything's under control. Sam, why aren't you picking up? Sam? Sam! To study years gone by, you could watch Truman's surprise win over Dewey in 1948. Or check out the surprise win of the Miracle Mets in the 1969 World Series. You could study Nixon's near-perfect sweep in the 1972 election. Or watch Total Perfection as the 72 Dolphins become the NFL's only undefeated team. If you see history a little differently, watch the Classic Years in Sports, Sunday and Thursday at 7, only on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. It's the ninth inning. Four runs, six hits, no errors for Cincinnati. Four runs, six hits, one error for the Reds. Angel Manguel, who hit for Hendrick, replaces him in center field. The first four games decided by one run. We're in the ninth inning of a tie game here. There's never been a World Series and where every game has been decided by one run. And Geronimo has a base hit to right. He leads off the ninth inning. Grimsley is coming up. He looks back to the dugout. And McCray is coming out on deck for Cincinnati. Bando in it, tight at third. They're looking for the bunt. And it is popped up. They let it drop. They throw to first. A wide throw, and they had a chance for a double play, and Fingers nearly threw it away. He let the ball drop, nearly threw it away to Hegan, who made a desperate lunging grab. Fingers was very alert. He wanted to get the double play on the pop by trapping it. Then he got excited, threw it to first base. Kubiak had come over to cover, made a good play to save the ball from going in the right field corner. Geronimo going out of your picture down to second base. He was lucky to tag the runner sliding in. And if they'd have the good throw to first, they had an easy shot at Geronimo down to second for a double play. So now the Reds have the go-ahead run at second. That's what they were trying to do anyway. And Dave Concepcion is the batter. He was a pinch hitter in the seventh, and he flied out. Ninth inning, tied four to four. One out. Geronimo, a fast man, a second. Ball one to Concepcion. Pete Rose on deck. That Kubiak has made some good plays at second base. Might have been a game saver right there should the A's win this. Two balls, no strikes to Concepcion. Hamilton, a left-hander. Locker, a right-hander in the Oakland bullpen. 
Dick Williams out. He played in one World Series with the Dodgers in 53. He managed for the Red Sox in the 67 Series. Played in two losing World Series teams and managed. Went out the steady fingers down. Two balls, no strikes to Concepcion. Foul ball, two and one. Monty Moore's on his way down to the A's clubhouse in case the A's win this one. But the battling Reds have them tied here in the ninth. Hit the bando. Up. Goes. Safe at first base. Bando had to charge it. The ball stayed down, just creeps beneath his glove. Now frantically trying to find it, still trying to find the handle to get Concepcion, but he has speed, bounces it in the dirt. Keegan with a fine stop. And the Reds have the top of the order up. They have charged Bando with an error. The defensive lapses are giving the Reds a shot here in the ninth. Rose has homered and single in four times. It's a ball to him. Concepcion with that fine speed down on first base, able to get a big lead, will have a good shot at any double play attempt. Ball two. There's the lead man, Geronimo at second. Concepcion at first. Foul back, two and one to row. One out here in the ninth inning. And Joe Morgan on deck. Foul the sinker off, two and two. And the A's bullpen with Hamilton and Locker. Two balls, two strikes. They sit in the center field. Geronimo will come in the star. Racing the third is Concepcion. On the throw to third, Rose takes second. And the Reds lead five to four. Rose went to second on the throw to third. And Wells throw over the head of the cutoff man, Burt Campanarison, offline, allowing Pete to go into second base in the scoring position. And now he raced the possibility of a double play. Joe Morgan will be the batter. Dick Williams wants his left-hander, young Dave Hamilton, to come on now and face Morgan. And loose defensive play has hurt the A's here in the ninth. The A's bring the infield in. Concepcion's at third. Rose is at second. One out. Big chance for the Reds now. A ball to Joe Morgan. There they are, Concepcion and Rose. Ball two, two and nothing. Grammis says, come on, send the sign up. Two and out to Morgan. He hits a high fly down the right field line, a shallow. Concepcion is tagging, a loose throw. Yes. Double play, Daddy. Air 
Agnes Sepia leading as the ball touched the glove. And here's a throw coming in by Matty Alou, a perfect throw. An attack by Tennis, and it's a double play, 9-2. You're watching Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. It's time for Bernie Williams to get into the batter's box and face a rock-hard ball coming at him from just 60 feet 6 inches away. Battling sinkers, sliders, curves, knucklers, change-ups, fork balls, fastballs, and the occasional brush back. But Bernie doesn't sweat it. Hey, he's got a whole tenth of a second to react. It's a game with unmatched history. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Filled with great players and great moments. Now, Sports Illustrated brings you baseball the way it was meant to be with SI's exclusive Classic Baseball Collection. You'll get the extraordinary two-video boxed set, The History of Baseball, plus your choice of a classic baseball cap from one of the game's historic teams. And best of all, SI's Classic Baseball Collection is free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Hello, babe. How do you feel? Fine, with The History of Baseball, show. you'll get a chance to relive an era when well, baseball was in large than life. Best. I hope all you boys will be out there watching it. And with your classic baseball cap, you can choose from any one of four historic teams. The Brooklyn Dodgers of 1955. Hey, that the 1951 New York Giants. The 1975 Boston Red Sox. Hey, oh, it's a long drive. If it or the legendary New York Yankees. And Joe DiMaggio, jolting choice up there, right-hand hitter. Call now, use your credit card, get 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the spectacular baseball preview and our famous swimsuit issue for only $1.48 an issue. You save 55% off the cover price. Plus, you'll get SI's classic baseball collection free. So pick your team, the Brooklyn Dodgers, the New York Giants, the Boston Red Sox, or the New York Yankees. There's nothing like SI's classic baseball collection, and there's nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Ted Williams wrote the book on hitting. Now he selects the top 20 hitters of all time. Spanning five generations, these Hall of Famers have one thing in common. They could hit a baseball. Find out who Ted Williams calls the 20 greatest hitters of all time on Ted Williams' 20 Greatest Hitters, Sunday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on Classic Sports Network. We now return to Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Matty Alou has been hitting below par in this series, but fielding above par. He made two good plays last night. He has just an average arm, but he gets rid of this ball in a hurry and throws a perfect strike to double up Concepcion at the plate to keep the Oakland A's within one run as the A's now will come to bat in the last of the ninth inning. They'll have their catcher Gene Tennis leading off. Then the second baseman Kubiak. And the pitcher to follow. Gene Tennis hit a three run homer in the second. Walked in the fourth. Rounded out in the seventh. Once again, we go down to a one-run ball game. Well, I can't remember so many important games in two weeks of the playoffs in the World Series that have been decided by so many one-run decisions. That was an earned run, by the way, for Cincinnati. Ball two to Gene Tennis. Grimsley, a starter pitching in relief. Billingham and other starters warming up in the Cincinnati bullpen. Ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Grimsley gets it over. 
Three and one. Anderson, and he's, I don't blame you, Sparky. He's on. The tying run is on for the A's in the last of the night. Ted Kubiak's the batter. Dave Duncan has come out on deck as a pinch hitter. The Reds lead five to four, last of the ninth inning. That's a strike to him. In those playoff games, five in each league, five of the 10 playoff games were decided by one run. We're into the fifth World Series game. They've all been one run ball games. One strike to Kubiak. He pops it up. Waiting for it, first baseman Perez. One out. Now Duncan will bat for Hamilton. And uh, Anderson just pointed out there. He wants to come out. He's got Billingham, a right-hander loose if he wants him. And he's going to bring him on. Right down against it. He's got a one-run lead to keep his team alive. Send them back to Cincinnati tomorrow. He's had to rip up the pitching staff today, but he's had to. And we're going to have another break in the action here in Oakland with a score in the last of the ninth inning. Cincinnati 5, Oakland 4. We'll be right back with more of Game 5 of the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Hey, Sam, listen, I'm nervous about the Mulligan presentation. I mean, how are we going to print out all those color pages, scan in those color logos, capture that frame of video, fax a proof, and make all those color copies? High five. Forget golf today, pal. The Brother MFC 7000, the total color solution, with all the color versatility you need exactly when you need it. Sam, it's me again. We've only got two more hours. I hope everything's under control. Sam, why aren't you picking up? Sam? Sam! We all reside in a place where people can reach us at three in the morning. We gotta get out of that place. And a celebrity cruise can get us out of that place. Celebrity Cruises, exceeding expectations. Awarded five stars by Fieldings and the top premium cruise line rating by Berlitz. Strike up the band, college football fans. Classic Sports is giving you a reason for celebration with the greatest games and players in the history of higher education. All the traditions, all the legends, and all the passion. Every Friday night, it's Smash Mouth in your face football. So hit the books and look up the words Dynasty, Intensity, and Hail Mary. Phi Beta Football, it's a rush. Catch Miami and Florida State in an 87 clash Tuesday at 8 on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Ultimate World Series on Classic Sports. Jack Bellingham, who pitched brilliantly here on Tuesday night, had to have ninth inning help. 112 lost 12 will face Dave Duncan, who lost his starting catching job just after the halfway mark. That's Blue Moon Odom, who's gone in to run for Gene Tennis. Duncan hit 19 homers during the year, 15 in this ballpark. He has good power. He hit most of those home runs early in the season. Seasonal batting average of 218. Pete Rose hit a homer in the first. Gene Tennis, a three-run homer in the second. Menke homered in the fourth. The A's got another run in the fourth. They led four to two. In the eighth, Morgan scored from second on the Tolan single. And the Reds went ahead in the ninth inning. 
And the A's let him away. Let him get away with the poor defensive play. I said Billingham pitched Tuesday was Wednesday night. Ball one. Sparky's worn a path out in that dugout. He usually sits down, but not after he fell behind three games to one. Back to him. One and one. If they go to Cincinnati tomorrow, Vita Blue will start. For Oakland, we don't know who will be going for Cincinnati. One ball, one strike. And he lines it into left field for a base hit. Here's Odom coming to third. The time runs to third. The throw by Rose comes in the second. And the A's continue their miraculous pitch hitting. They've had two pinch hits today, and they had three pinch hits in one inning, the ninth inning last night. Now, Herb Norn, the third base coach, wants to talk to Campanaris. Campanaris has gone hitless in four times. This is the top of the A's batting order. Cincinnati leading five to four, last of the ninth inning. Another seat squirmer here at Oakland Coliseum. The A's fans standing with their banners behind the dugout. Everybody on their feet there. The infield is tight at first and third. Just a little shorter than halfway at short and second. They get the ground ball at either short or second. They may try for the double play to get out of the inning. Campanaris fouls it off. Out of play. Strike one. Billingham's ahead of Campanaris. One strike. John Odom, the tying run at third. The on-deck batter, Matty Alou. The winning run, Duncan at first. Back to Don Gullett, another starter, is warming up. There are three starters. Grimsley, Billingham, and Gullett have been in the bullpen. And he pops it up. Perez back. Morgan going and takes it in foul ground. Here comes Odom. And he is out. The ball game is over. A double play. Odom gambled and tried to score on the foul pop. And he's out at home plate. Dick Williams comes out. The Reds are still alive. They win it. Here's Odom tagging. He thought Morgan might not be quite alert or have his back to the plate. Odom tries to score. The throw from Joe Morgan is in time. A double play to wind up the ball game, and Cincinnati leads it five to four. Now watch Joe Morgan. He yells Perez off the ball. Morgan, quickly, even though he slipped and fell, fired to the plate, and for a fellow who hasn't had a hit in this series, Morgan is playing a very valuable role yesterday and today. So the Reds win it. And for the fifth World Series game in a row, it was decided by one run. And let's go down now to Tony Kubek. With me on the field, Joe Morgan, one of the heroes, not only with that last play and throw, but also with his base stealing and bases on ball. Joe, you waved Perez off on that last play. Well, Doggy was moving back away, and I was going to be moving away also, but I figured I could round the ball and have my body tw going toward the plate better than he could. You got two bases on ball today, a couple of stolen bases, and scored two very important runs. First time that team speed has shown for you guys. Well, it's the first time I've been on base with any consistency, Tony. I, You know, like I said all along, if I get on base, we'll score some runs because these guys will get me in, and it seems though like when I get on base, things happen. And so far in the series, I hadn't been able to get on base, but really, to be honest with you, I think today gave me a big lift. And I think I'll be real good from now on. This fellow's been behind me all day, Joe Morgan. I tell you, he was one of the big heroes in this game. But on that particular play that you just saw, 
Pretty good play on both ends. Really, because Joe Morgan, he wanted that ball all the way. Campaneras popped it up to Joe Morgan, and he was calling for it all the way. And even though he slipped Joe, he still threw a bullet to Johnny Bench at home plate. But it was Johnny Bench who was blindsided. Now keep in mind, this is in foul territory down the right field line, and he makes uh, the play by really planting himself there. right there at home plate. His foot was blocking Blue Moon Odom, and there was no way he was going to score. He, to me, blocked it properly. I mean, Mike Sosha would stand there like a human dead end and right. dare you to knock him over, which you can get hurt doing that. But Bench gave you some of the plate, took it away. Yeah, he did, but he also did it the proper way. He showed the runner right. shin guard. He had his foot pointed toward third base, so he wasn't going to get hurt on the play, but yet he pivoted back and then blocked Blue Moon from getting across well, the plate. These guys today, they're like they got a pair of pliers in their hand. They catch the ball. Ole, yeah, ole. how are you? Like a <laughs> Maitre D at a hotel. Oh, you're going to try to score? Table for six. There you are. How about Pete Rose in this thing, though? Well, he was the offensive hero. Uh, he started off the game with a home run, had two RBIs, three for five in the game. So, really, the two heroes, we would say, would be Pete Rose with the bat, Joe Morgan with the glove, and a great game-saving tag by Johnny Bench. Boy, there's no catcher ever going to have a bad day on this show, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the Reds and the A's took this series to Game 7. Gene Tennis came back to haunt Cincinnati, driving in two runs in the finale as Oakland escaped with a 4-3 win. The series was a clash between two well-matched teams as six of the games were decided by one run. And no contest was more of a battle than Game 5. Well, for Gary Carter, I'm Joe Garagiola, and thanks for joining us. Friday, it's the Ultimate World Series finale. First game six, Carbo, Fist, Nuff said. Then you think you've seen pitching duels? Well, you haven't seen Jack. Morris, that is. Battling John Smoltz in game seven, Friday at seven, only on Classic Sports. I really thank the team that, that I played on in 69, 70, and 71. Ranked up there with the greatest teams of all time. That's my own opinion. Get personal this week with Brooks Robinson on Distant Replay, Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. Stars. They shine. They shimmer. And boy, can they shoot. Classic Sports Network presents Phi Beta Classics, the most exciting college basketball games in history with the biggest stars of the game. Jordan. Ewing, Wilkins, Drexler. Puts it up. So watch some stellar hoop action as North Carolina takes on Georgia, Saturday at 7.15 Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. We were dedicated. We were on a mission to win the American League Championship. And fortunately enough, we was able to do that. But we didn't know we was going to go up against the big red machine. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough with them, again, to get out front, three, three games to zero, and uh, had a chance to sweep them. We were ahead in the ninth inning of the ball game, Lee May, and we had been told, do not throw Lee May a fastball on the first pitch. He will be swinging, he'll be swinging hard, and he can lose it. And what did Eddie Watt do? He threw him a fastball with two men on. He lost it. We lost five to three. But we didn't let that bother us. We came back the next day and, and won the next game, and uh, we were champs again. And uh, we had something to prove, and we not only to ourselves, but to the public.